Hey, what's going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to another video on my Nissan GTR. We're sitting in it right now. I need to get going to night racing today because I've got a bit of a problem with my car. So currently, well, it's been developing for the last couple of months or so. There's been like a rattle. Uh, it started pretty small, like a little, I thought, oh no, what have I done to my car? But after a while, I thought to myself, this is probably the bell housing issue, which uh, should happen about 25,000 miles on a GTR from 09, 2009. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it's just that. But there's a few exciting things to put in this video as well. I'm also getting a rear wheel drive module for my car, which means I can switch it to all 100% rear wheel drive, which will be pretty weird for a Nissan GTR since it's so famously known for the amazing traction control and the four wheel drive system, or I should say all wheel drive system. Whilst I'm at Night Racer, they're also going to be fitting a new Ecutech map software which means that I can now control all of the map settings from my phone which is really exciting because you can control the turbo boost pressure you can control and you can have a look at error codes for your car so if there's a problem um, all I have to do is literally download a copy from on my phone on my app and send it to the dealer they'll be able to tell what's wrong on my car if there ever, ever is a problem with my car but yeah first of all let me show you where this rattles coming from because it's really annoying me I have just started the car up so it's not properly warmed up yet it seems to happen when it's a little bit warmer but let me show you whereabouts the rattles coming from all right so where it seems to be coming from is about, you know, this this far up underneath where the handbrake is. So it's kind of like under here. And uh, as I said, it's quite cold at the moment. It's quite windy outside. I'm probably making a wind noise, but yeah, it's, it's happening like under here, which is really annoying. I can feel it sometimes through the handbrake. Apparently the uh, rear wheel drive module is like a little chip basically and the seat needs to come out So it's quite a long job just to get the seat out and then it's gonna be put under here So lots of exciting things the car is also quite dirty at the moment You probably can't see it from the camera, but look look at that. It's horrible It's got all the tree stuff falling on it. Uh, this is the problem at the moment It's getting quite cold now, but apart from that guys the car is running well The bell housing issue is a common issue with GTRs. Uh, it's a routine kind of thing every 25,000 miles So hopefully once I've done this I shouldn't have any issues at all anyway guys i'm actually running a late head to night racer so i really need to set off um, i'm going to leave the cameras with albert who's the owner of night racer and he's going to film the process of changing the bell housing in and out and just you know the real drive module and also we're going to have a look at the ecutac map when i pick up the car because i need to get back really quickly as well bit of a rush at the moment but Really excited, even though it's gonna cost me a bit of money to fix this bell housing. Hopefully, the only issue is the bell housing. That's that's what I'm hoping, fingers crossed, but that's enough German jabber anyway. Let's go and drop off the car. When I get it back, I actually need to clean the car. I need to get a detailer, so yeah, expensive times. So guys, I now have the car back. I'm sitting in it. The bell housing has been replaced. Luckily, it was only a bell housing issue. So there was no other issues that it could have been causing a rattle. It's all fixed. It's all done. Absolutely no problems at all now. As I said at the start of the video, I've had my rear wheel module installed, which I'll show you in just a second. I've also had the Ecutech uh, map software, which I can now control by the phone, which I'm going to give you a little demonstration whilst I was at the Night Racer garage. So pretty exciting stuff, but let me show you how I actually use and control the rear wheel drive module. So the module itself is actually under the seat where I'm sitting, but to control it, what I have to do is have this torque split setting on, which uh, used to be transmission oil pressure, but now I've got it on torque split. Now what I need to do is actually wiggle this this like that and now I can control this is in all-wheel drive this is currently the GTR setting as it is now if I click down on here down 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 
as you can see it's going through four different settings um, like so so at the top that means 50-50 uh, split which is normal at the bottom this is 100% rear wheel drive but what I'm gonna do guys because it's quite cold outside at the moment the tires are really cold the road surface is really cold I haven't got a lot of experience driving this car in rear wheel drive I'm gonna leave this for another time I'm gonna do a proper video driving it in rear wheel drive if I can go somewhere where they've got like a drift uh, practice or area to drift what I'm gonna try and do is actually drift with this, this car which is gonna be quite hard um, because it's automatic as well you don't have a clutch but you know what we'll give it a go and also as I said the belt housing is fixed so listen to this absolutely no rattles at all I can't feel any vibrations through the handbrake now so it's all fixed thanks to Night Racer I've just asked Albert from Night Racer what the different settings are because there's four settings one is a normal Nissan settings one is rear-wheel drive the two in the middle I wasn't sure of so I'm actually gonna let you read that yourself so as you can see there's the different torque settings for the car so so this is what he said he says obviously 100% rear-wheel drive and then you've got the Nissan OEM settings and then you've got a setting with 20% torque to the front and one with 40% torque to the front but what's impressive is that only kicks in on full throttle so you can have it in real drive setting but if you're partly using your throttle it's still gonna be like you know fairly safe to drive four-wheel drive basically so I think that's really clever how it's done that with a little chip that goes under your seat but that's enough talk about the real drive module if you want to see more let me know hit that like button we're gonna do another video on it but let's move on to the EcuTac map software which we can now control by our phone now normally I would use my steering wheel and I'd press cancel and on and off and do all these different buttons that were programmed into the map and I can change it with the rev limiter and I can use the traction control settings and the, you know the suspension settings to set different pops and map but now it's all controlled by my phone because my phone is quite small it's gonna be hard for the camera to pick up we're gonna use an iPad and we've actually Actually already demonstrated it back at night races so I'm gonna get you into the clips right now so we are back and my car as you can see I've got Albert sitting in here he's gonna be the demonstrator today but um, you can see under here if I just zoom in this is where the uh, the ECU is altered and you have a module plugged in now today we're actually gonna be upgrading it uh, to this one here um, so this is gonna have different features you can control it from an iPad uh, or your iPhone with an app uh, so let's have a look at it now. Alright, so as you can see we've got data login, map switching, launch control, boost controller, valet mode, custom parameters does that say? VTC tool, uh, performance analyzer, uh, ECM tool, TCM tool and TPMS tool. I was actually reading it off my camera, that's why I couldn't read it really quickly. But, let's play around with some of these settings and actually show you what it does. First of all, the most important ones for a tuner like us is the data login. Yep. So basically, this will tell us everything about your engine, as you can yep. see here. So let's start, you can see the values here. Yep. You've got your boost, acceleration, torque split, that boost on there. See the number? Yep. So you can basically log it. Yep. If you need to, you can tap, it's now saved. Just go to archives, select the log, and you can email it to your tuner. The second is the map switching. So on your car, we have four maps. Yep. Uh, so what we used to do on the steering uh, steering button here, we don't need to anymore. Although it still works, you can just click that. You can see on the rev counter, it goes up and yeah. down, whatever. It's map instant you can see. as well. See that? Before, when you told me this, I was like, oh, it's going to be some lag or something. But yeah. literally, as soon as you press the button, it changes. Exactly, which is good. exactly. And then you have your launch control. You can set your launch control. This speed. as well is really handy because to set your launch control before, you have to basically do it without letting go of the brake and then just control it by changing and moving up and down uh, I think it's the cruise control setting exactly, uh, but exactly. now you can just set it without having to make a lot of noise before you do it uh, which is good perfect okay next one is your boost controller so on yep. the four maps you can set each map at a different boost level yeah so Obviously on your car your maximum boost is 1.3 bar and your minimum is the standard factory boost at 0.7 bar yeah so you can have it specific to each map you have your traction control so you can turn the traction control when it's heavier yeah. or none at all. So we just filmed a video on Albert's car over here. He's got this kind of traction trash control where if you accelerate really hard, it will just pop, 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 pop and make all these popping noises. Um, if you've got that set to the max setting, it will do a lot of popping basically. And if you can turn it down as well. So it's, it's all customized. Correct. And this one is the interesting one, pops and bangs. Pops and bangs, everyone so loves have, pops and bangs. Exactly, you can have no pops and bangs at all or you can have loads of it, like yeah. that. Okay, that's so good now. And it's as easy as dragging your finger, you exactly. don't need to like, just, again, go to your garage. Just like Brilliant. that. 
easy. And this one here is how hard the clutch clamps. So you can yep. have it really violent or you can have it really soft. Yeah. Yeah, so more, no, normally the more powerful cars, we probably have it quite high. Uh, engine faults, diagnostic tool, you can self-diagnose the car. At yep. the moment, you've got no faults. Uh, performance analyzer, so this, uh, you go 0 to 60, 0 to 60 speed, yep. uh, 0 to 100 kilometers. And th this works off of your speedo, basically. Correct. So yeah, it's not a V-Box, not a GPS one, yeah. it's just your speedo, but obviously it's still a nice it's, thing it's to have. It's good enough, yeah, it's good yeah, enough It's good enough for the road, isn't it? That's it's not right. a track or a track right. strip. And here is your ECU reset. Sometimes you might get codes or your battery's gone flat and it's throwing out different codes. So you can, easy, you can do an ECU reset yep. and your idle learn. Cool. If your transmission's had any warnings, you can see. At the moment, you've had no warnings. So yep. your car's running perfect. Uh, oil temperature history, you can see how hot it's ever run or how yep. cold it's ever run, that's it. Clutch learning, that's good. Yep. This is a really useful, uh, you know, after a few launches, sometimes you might need a clutch learn. Yep. And your launch statistics, you've launched your car nine times. Nine times yeah, since the last bad. reset, which Correct. if you uh, watch the modball video, you'll see quite a few of them on there anyway. That's it. So we go back again and your tyre pressure monitor sensor. Uh, at the moment you won't need we it. We have a tyre pressure thing in here. What's different to this yes. one? Or is it uh, the same? It's, no, no, it's different because the, the way this is controlled, you cannot control it here. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. So, but at the moment we can't can't do anything because we've got nothing to show. Yeah. Like also, since this map, one thing I've never had is the rev limiter removed. So I've now had that removed. Car's been sitting there warming up for a bit. Demonstrate how much louder it is. Go. Jesus Christ. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but. I'll make sure it's always warm before I do that. So guys, thank you for watching the video. The car is now fixed 100%. Um, I was I was honestly, I genuinely thought there may have been another problem just because I just had that feeling. You know when you have a feeling there's more, there's gonna be something more than just what it could be or what it would be. So I thought it'd be the bell housing. Bell housing was replaced and the whole unit was replaced. Some places only do like a bearing inside like or do, do a part of the bell housing. This had the whole thing replaced and it was ordered from Nissan directly. So it's a revised model. Um, so it should be longer lasting than the 09 version that was on this car. Also, for those of you that really want to see the five things I hate about my Nissan GTR, I will be making that video soon. I've been so busy driving a 2017 GTR, doing these types of videos, getting the bell housing fixed, doing my main channel videos on gaming on FIFA and stuff so it's been pretty hectic but I will get around to that video probably in the next week or two so that's going to round off this video the car's fixed when the car's fixed and it's perfectly working fine I am happy I don't know about you guys but if your car's good everything's good anyway guys I will see you in a bit bye bye